This is our second video for advanced uh, moisture meter usage and pitfalls. Today we've set up a demo unit so that we can show you the difference between different materials. We've got four back jib simulation here and we've got an area that we've um, pre-wet at this end so you can show the difference in the morning moisture meter. Four back jib um, was used predominantly from the 1940s to 1960s when testing older houses, it's important you know that whether it's foil back jib or not. Often the um, ceiling uh, jib board will have foil on the back also, so if you've got access to the attic, you can see it that way. Generally what it does is it increases our readings by about 10 digits. So when you run the moisture meter across it, if you, if you get when you get to the foil back jib area, um, we'll start, it'll increase at the timber, about 10 digits, and the foil back jib increases about 10 digits also. So across here we're getting readings um, around the 30 mark with the foil on the back. So you do have to be careful because um, it, it could give you a false damp reading uh, if you're not familiar with um, the difference between foil back jib and normal jib. Jib bracing sheets also will do the same thing. It's a higher density material so you'll get higher readings over that of about 10 digits. Um, so in those instances, you have to raise your acceptable level, um, base level, maybe from 45 to 55. So now we're going to show the moisture reading when you contact a wet area, um, as can be seen in the IR video I took previously. When placing the moisture meter on the wet area, the alarm sounding um, because anything over 80 is wet, and when we get away from the wet area, we drop back to a normal reading. Lower, of course, where there's no timber behind and increasing slightly where the timber is. Again, the wet area, although not visible to us, um, the IR camera can see it, allowing us to put the moisture meter directly on the anomaly area. I note a number of YouTube videos um, show people testing tiles within a shear cubicle area. Um, there is no point doing this. Tiles do absorb moisture and also the grout will allow moisture through. That's why we have waterproofing membranes. All this tells us is that moisture is under the tiles, which is usually just an indication that somebody's used the tile, the shower recently. So don't use your moisture meter inside the shower area. Take your base readings on your tiles first uh, in a comparable spot. In this bathroom, we want to check outside the shower area so we know whether water is coming under the tiles and escaping from the shower or not. So we're going to take a base reading on the opposite tile on the opposite side of the door first. So this is our base reading we're taking on the opposite side of the door. Tiles often do increase the reading slightly. So this base reading is 40, 40.1. So this is the side that we want to test outside the shower cubicle area. Note there is some staining here. This is often an indication that water is seeping out from behind the screen. And when we put our moisture meter on the wall, we can see that it's very damp, almost into the wet zone. I've already pre-tested this to make sure that there's no metal in the wall in this location. This is quite a common thing for some moisture to come out from the shower. This shouldn't be a problem as long as A, it's not escaping out of the door, and B, the membrane continues through to the door frame sufficiently. So we'll take a reading on the door frame. It's probably up slightly, although there is fixing down here, so I'd say that's probably still acceptable, um, especially when we compare it to the other door. It's, it's not a lot of difference in reading. So the correct way to, to check to see if the shower cubicle is leaking or not is to check the walls opposite whenever possible. In this location, the wall backs onto the hallway, so we are able to test the wall opposite the shower cubicle. And as you can see with the meter, although this wall does have a skin coat of plaster over it, uh, just because of the Spanish style of this house is, the readings are all within acceptable limits. So that tells us that the moisture is not coming through the wall from the shower cubicle area. I know a number of other people on YouTube uh, using pronged meters uh, and saying that you can use them effectively on the surface of a wall without putting any penetrating holes. I wouldn't recommend this. I have a pronged meter and I've done some testing and I've found that you get lower readings. Pronged meters are designed to be inserted into the wall, which of course damages your jib and that's why I don't recommend using them. Um, but they are handy of course once the jib has been removed to get a, a more accurate reading off the timber itself. 
So I can show you here, this is my pronged meter. Um, obviously we know this corner here is wet. When we place the prong meter just slightly on the wall, it does give a higher reading than normal, but it's only reading in what we call the damp zone. Um, so it's not giving an accurate reading. But this meter will not work accurately unless it penetrates the wall. I can demonstrate this on my hand by just pushing lightly. And we're getting a similar sort of a reading. If we push a bit harder, we're getting a more accurate reading. That is where the reading should be for a wet wall. It should be off the top of the scale. Now this particular property is on a concrete base. So you must remember when using your moisture meter on concrete, they're not really designed, um, this particular meter is not really designed for concrete. You can use it, but you have to be aware of the fact that the concrete will greatly increase the readings. As I can show you here, this floor is dry, but it's giving us readings in the high 60s. That would be uh, normal for concrete. However, when using thermal imaging, you can often see the, the damp or wet area in the IR images and the readings will still increase. Uh, so your threshold might be, your base reading might be around 100, so anything over 100 you could consider damp or wet. You also have to be careful of concrete that you're not uh, taking readings on any lime staining, that's that white powdery substance you see on the concrete. That's the chemicals in the concrete which has been washed out uh, after moisture has passed through it. That will give you a false high reading on your moisture meter. Also, when testing toilets, you have to be aware of a splash because um, I find the residue uh, chemicals left from urine will actually give you a false reading on the meter also. So if you're concerned about a toilet or bathroom leak that could be caused by splash, you need to have the wall washed down and check it again once the um, cleaning fluid has had a chance to dry. Please feel free to make a comment or if you have any questions, thank you.